Welcome to the encore presentation of the Biblical Perspectives, The Gift of Apostleship, Part 1. Beginning in November of 2017, we began a verse-by-verse -verse expositional study of the wonderful book of Romans, which was the Apostle Paul's letter or epistle to the Christians in the church at Rome. The, we, so we designated our study in Romans, the Romans Road to Salvation, since that book in the Bible more clearly tells how one can come to a saving knowledge of faith and, and, and salvation through Jesus Christ than any other book in the Bible. In the book of Romans, it is revealed mankind's need for salvation, God's provision for salvation, the how or means of salvation, and the result of one receiving salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the first 11 chapters, which form the theology of the book. In chapter 7 of this wonderful epistle, Romans, the Apostle Paul transitions from theology to practice. He begins informing regarding the believer's responsibility to live for God, to serve God, in light of the wonderful salvation that we have received from God. In chapter 12, the first five verses, here's what is said in essence. 12, 1, as Paul begins teaching practically on Christian living, he says, generally, believers are to live holy and sacrificial lives. And he says that's our reasonable act of worship. In verse 2 of Romans chapter 12, Paul says we are not to be conformed any longer as believers to the world in its way, the world system, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds as believers in Jesus Christ. In verse 3, believers are told that we are to live lives marked by humility and not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. Verse 4, we are told that as we live these Christian lives in the body of Christ, we have different functions in the church. And in verse 5, we are told believers are, even though the functions are different, work in harmony with each other, serving God in the church of Christ. Verse 6 is next in chapter 12 of Romans, and it leads us to, a, to begin a discussion on spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts of believers, and that will be the initial focus of these studies. The scripture text used will include Romans 12, 6 through 8, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, and Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. I'm going to ask First Lady Gwen, who's one of the ministers here at Emmanuel, to read all of those texts so we can know the verses that we will be teaching from as we go ongoingly in the weeks to come discuss spiritual gifts. Romans 12, 6 through 8. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly, if prophecy according to proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, hmm. he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God 
who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common mm. good. Yes. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. Yes. To another, faith by the same Spirit, and to another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another, the effecting of miracles, and to another, prophecy, and to another, the distinguishing of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, and to another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, various kinds of tongues. Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. Those are uh, the texts that we will be teaching from in the weeks to come. Let's begin our discussion on spiritual gifts, talking about the distribution of the gifts. Each born again believer, let me repeat that, each born again believer has been given at least one gift mm -hmm. that is to be exercised in the body of Christ for the good of the entire church. I would like to read some uh, supporting scripture for that. Some might have been included in what you just heard, but I'd like to highlight the idea of each one having a gift and using it for the benefit of all. Minister Gwen, there are uh, four excerpts from scripture below. Would you, also, would you read those again, please? Sure, Romans 12, 6, 8. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given us. Minister, let me interrupt you. So we have different gifts. Different gifts. Now, I want us to notice as we look at this, mm -hmm. according to the grace given us. Yes. One title of spiritual gift, another title, a synonymous title, is grace gifts. Yes. They are gifts that the Holy Spirit gave each believer as God was pleased to have him do graciously given not anything any believer deserved right. but graciously given as a to be a blessing to the church i wanted to emphasize the grace aspect of the gifts absolutely in fact that word gifts comes from the word charis or charismata because it means it's a grace given gift great fantastic okay please continue minister first corinthians 12 4 now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. Yes. First Corinthians 12, seven. But to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Minister, may I interrupt you again? Yes. Let's, let's talk about this. But to each one, but to each one, Christian. Each Christian. But to each born again believer, without exception. Without exception. The Holy Spirit has graciously given at least one gift. Yes. The Holy Spirit, and that gift is to be a blessing to others, not just a gift had by that person. Exactly. It's to cause the church to function better, and that is the primary place that spiritual gifts are to be used. So, so then, let's say this initially, as we start these studies. Anyone who has a spiritual gift that they don't know about and or are not using 
uh, they are not benefiting the church as God intended them to benefit the church. The church local or the church universal. Is that a statement of fact? That is a statement of fact. So I have a body. We are in the body of Christ. The body of Christ needs all its parts working. All of the parts working. I need the, the tip of my little finger. That joint is important. Yes. I need my big toe. That's important for balance. Yes. I need my ears for hearing. I need all of the parts of my body, yes. internal and external. Yes. Comely and common yes. and beautiful. Yes. <laughs> we have body parts that we kind of cover up. We have body parts we want to put rouge on and let everybody see them glow. <laughs> yes. But all of our body parts are necessary. Is that what we're saying here? We are saying that. So whether a member of the church is a quiet person who wants to serve a gift of service by counting money mm -hmm. in the back room on Sunday and never be seen. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be seen, but they're necessary. Necessary, yes. So, so if someone else says, well, I can't teach, I don't want to teach, I'm afraid of crowds, but I'll stand on the door, I have a great smile, I'll pass out bulletin. My gift is hospitality. Is that gift needed in the church? Definitely needed. So everybody's necessary, and they should be doing their gift for, the, for God and for his church. Right. Okay, yes. I just want to amplify this as we begin these studies. Exactly. exactly. You have anything you want to add? Uh, no, I agree with that. That's what varieties mean. They're, they differ. Yes. And they differ in type. Yes. And they differ in the operation. Type and function. As well. Wow. But it's all needed to run the church of God. So the fact that I have a gift of service, you have a gift of service, don't mean we serve in the same way. May not look the same with each of us doing it. So the function may be different, mm -hmm. although it's both a gift of service. Yes. So I don't have to serve like you, you don't have to serve like me, but if we're both called to serve, we should serve, however God has in, encouraged us to serve. Yes. Fantastic. Yes, but God gives us the guidelines. Fantastic. So it all should line up with scripture. That's what we're going to emphasize throughout these studies. Everything should line up with Scripture. Exactly. Thank you very much, Minister. I keep interrupting you, but I think it's for a good reason. Okay. We have one more, one more snippet, amen? Yes. All right. 1 Corinthians 12, 11 says, But one and the same Spirit works mm. all these things. Wow. Distributing to each one individually just as he wills. Wow. So that's really important because people will tend to feel like their gift is not as significant yes. as another person's gift. Right. Because maybe it's not a speaking gift. Ah. Mm. Maybe, maybe it's not an upfront gift as you described. Right. Counting behind the scenes. Right. Um, hospitality can be a gift that is seen and unseen. Yes. Somebody prepares for guests. Yes. And somebody greets the guests. Yes. But they're both necessary. Wow. Okay, so the Holy Spirit uses both those people in the operation of that gift right. in the function of the church. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, that is uh, the, 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 the distribution of gifts. Let's now turn our attention to the definition of gifts. This is good. This is rich. This is important. Listen to this. The definition, spiritual gifts fall into two categories. I repeat, spiritual gifts fall into two categories. With all of them, all of the gifts, no matter the category, coming from God. We have proof of that given in the Bible in James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadows. So all gifts of all kinds, different varieties, different performances, they all are given by God the, in both categories. Now let's talk about the two categories of gifts, but, but before we do that, let's say this. The Greek word in the New Testament, in New Testament rendered gifts refers to the special grace enablings, enablings that people don't deserve. Grace enablings given to the believers, listen, first, 
It talks about those given to those at the point of salvation. But it also, the term gift applies to those natural endowments or talents and abilities that God gives to individuals not dependent on their being saved. Let me put that in common terms. God blesses people with special gifts upon salvation, grace enablings. God also, by his grace, blesses other people who are not saved mm -hmm. with special gifts without the need for salvation. He's just a good God. Yes. Now, if God blesses those people, you, you would think they would use their gift for God, but all of them don't. But God is in the habit of giving gifts to people who don't always appreciate him. This is true. As well as those who do. Mm -hmm. All right? So now, let's talk about this a little bit further. An example of a grace enabling by the Holy Spirit, an example of a gift given by the Holy Spirit upon salvation, is the gift of teaching. Mm -hmm. Listen to what it says. Oh, we heard it before, but again, in 1 Corinthians 28, and it's point C, I believe. God has appointed in the church. God has appointed in the church by the Holy Spirit. First, apostles. That's why we're going to discuss it first tonight, because apostles is listed first. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. So the gift of teaching is a special grace enabling upon some people becoming safe they get a special anointing to teach all right listen there are those in the church anointed to teach the truth of the gospel in a very clear and a very very effective manner i want to give you a couple of examples that most of you watching this tonight might be aware of because they're so well known in in america and around the world first dr tony evans of the oak Cl oak clip Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in the city of Oak Cliff, Texas, outside Dallas. Yes. Dr. Evans is an anointed pastor, teacher, expositor of the Word of God, and made history, I believe, by being the first to graduate uh, a man of color from Dallas Theological Seminary. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Uh, Dr. Evans is also uh, uh, the founder and teacher of the Urban Alternative, yes. bringing Christ to the inner cities of America uh, uh, in a very, very effective way for dozens of years. Another uh, 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 great example of an anointed teacher is Dr. Charles Stanley, yes. pastor of the First Baptist Church of Atlanta and former uh, two-term president of the uh, uh, Southern Baptist Convention. Wow. And also uh, uh, in touch ministries, he's the founder and teacher of that television print and radio ministry. What a dynamic man of God. Both these men have been given a special gift by God to communicate the gospel in a very, very effective manner. Yes. Examples of the gift of teaching, gift given by the grace and enabling of the Holy Spirit upon salvation. Now let's turn our attention then to an example of a natural endowment in individuals who've been blessed with special gifts without necessarily being saved. Being Christian, yes. The first example would be that I'll use here today. Uh, well, let's just say this. Let's use the area of singing. Some people have been given incredible voices. Yes. To sing, they can move audiences. Yes. And have great effect and some of them without even having been trained. Yes. A couple of good examples are the opera singers, Leontine Price, yes. one of the most celebrated sopranos worldwide in opera. Yes. And Mr. Mr. Luciano Pavarotti, yes. a world-renowned tenor, yes. moved audiences, naturally gifted by God. Mm -hmm. So. That kind of defines spiritual gifts. Let's talk about the determination. Each believer should seek to discover what their spiritual gift is. They should first of all pray about it and ask God to help them identify it. They should seek counsel from church leadership who should have some experience 
in helping people realize their spiritual gifts. Yes. They should always listen to their heart mm -hmm. to see what it is their heart is pulling them to do. Some people said uh, giftedness in ministry can be desire plus opportunity. Yes. Mm -hmm. They should observe what spiritual activity they seem to do easily and with enjoyment. Minister, you have any comments on this? Well, it can be really uh, unnerving when you think about doing, performing a gift in God's house yes. and for God's service. Yes. Um, I happen to know that I have a gift of teaching, but I remember back in the early days, I was really very nervous and I didn't know that I had a spiritual gift of teaching. Okay. And when someone asked me to teach, it was really scary to teach in the church. Yes. And, but I mean, I taught as a little girl, taught my dogs, <laughs> taught my animals as a lovely child, you know, so I'm talking and uh, you're training things. So if you have a gift, you might be practicing your gift all the time, right. but you don't know that's what it is. Yes. And God will draw you. Wow. And he will give you those opportunities to uh, manifest the gift so that you can understand it. Right. And, and I kind of got the feeling a lot that we, the church, yes. sometimes we make those gifts uh, too far reaching. Mm. We make it such a mystery, huh. you know. And I think that we can make it less of a mystery if we do things like what we're doing today and if more of us share our early experiences in developing our gift because even when you discover it you still have to develop it yes as you're talking i'm thinking of your three-year discipleship program and your three-year women in ministry program uh, yes. that a lovely lady i'm thinking of now a pastor's wife went through yes and i do believe she's watching tonight i'm not going to name her but she knows who she is. So when you first had her doing uh, small teachings in women in ministry, you know she you knew she, we knew she had a calling. Yes. Uh, uh, we knew she had an anointing. Yes. We knew she was spirit filled and one of the holiest women we'd ever met in our lives. Yes. But when you would ask her to have something to say, she would break down in tears and cry. Yes. Now let's just make this long story very short on this minister uh, that we know and love and have worked with over many years. Now, you give her a subject to teach. She teaches an hour and has to pull her own coat to stop. <laughs> exactly. And you know, it's interesting because she and others, they really felt like, I'm not worthy. Yes, yes. And how could it be me? Yes. I haven't been to higher schools of learning. Yes. I, I didn't go to Dallas Seminary like Dr. Dr. Tony Evans. Evans. Yes. Uh, you know, I didn't get trained in, in touch ministry or yes. even at Emmanuel as right. far as that goes. Okay, right. so how could it be me? So that's where the more seasoned person, yes. we are then responsible to encourage them, especially if we see the gift yes. there that God is doing, we are to encourage them to have courage. Yes. So it takes courage to step out on faith in the deep water of developing your gift yes. because you don't know where it's going to go yes. and you don't know who it's going to reach and you worry about all these things in the natural. Yes. But if the Holy Spirit is definitely giving, giving that gift to you, yes. you will reach someone. Someone will be blessed yes. by your gift. And I used to tell the ladies when they kind of shrunk back like she did. I remember reading that Peter went to the University of Jerusalem. Me either. Now, Paul went to school. Yes. But Paul's anointing didn't come from school. Right. Paul's anointing came on the Damascus road. Exactly. And Ananias sat him down and, and, and taught him. Yes. And the brothers took him under their wing and discipled him. Right. And he became the great evangelist in the history of the world. So it's not always about formal training, although you say once you are called and once you know you have a gift, you should seek development in that gift. Yes. Depending on what area it is, that determines what you should do. Yes. But everyone should uh, explore and find out what that gift is and then find out how I can be the best at this gift. Exactly. Thank you. Excellent, excellent, Minister. Thank you so very much uh, for your input. You're welcome. So uh, I believe we're now we're down to the duty. 
Yes. It is everyone's duty that once their gift is discovered mm -hmm. to diligently use it to serve the church. It's so amazing. I, I, got, a, I, got, a, I got a text uh, given me that had come to the church and uh, uh, it, it was given to me. A brother, a, new, a fairly new brother, he, he's been here two or three years. Mm -hmm. But he's all bothered because he can't get to church and can't serve right now. So I got a message saying, let pastor know I need to do something. Mm -hmm. Does the church need cleaning? No, somebody already did that. Mm -hmm. Does anything need fixing? Well, I don't know. Uh, he didn't go through the chain of command. Why is he uh, uh, contacting me? So I said, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said to staff, I said, let me get in touch with this man. Here's a man that knows he's a servant of God. And I know this for a fact by watching him a couple of years. He's at home uncomfortable that he can't get to the church house and serve. So I called him up. And I said, I got your message. The cleaning is done. But God showed me something you can do. Wow. And I found something over in the conference center that needs to be done. I told him to get in touch with, with the head of our, 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 plant, our plant manager. Get in touch with him and arrange to come down to the church to do something. I found a way for our brother to use his gift so he can feel useful during the COVID-19 pandemic. I felt wow. I was a good pastor that day. <laughs> but here's a man that wants to serve. Yes. Th yes. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to diligently use your gift mm -hmm. in service of the church. No one should have to ask you. Mm -hmm. That you shouldn't be like a brother here told me not too long ago. You shouldn't just be sitting on the premises waiting on the promises. <laughs> We should be about our father's business and trying to make his church better. Yes. yes. Oh, it, it, you know, uh, one of the greatest things uh, as a pastor is to see the humility yes. that Christianity brings to the heart of gifted, talented people. There's a lady in our church. I'm not going to identify her, but she knows who she is. She is a, 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 a specialist in the area of medicine. Yes. She's on the front line. Yes of this epidemic, telling my wife she barely has time to breathe and respond to the text my wife sends her. With crews under her, on the front line here in Southern California, she can't wait until it's her turn to get to church with the million dollar smile she has and pass out bulletins on the front door as yes. one of the best hostesses that we have. Yes, definitely. Wait a minute. I thought doctors were supposed to be important. I said something one day when she was in the audience and I checked with her later to see if she understood what, one, what a wonderful thing to do in the church. And I said, passing out bulletins in the church is more important than practicing medicine in Southern California. She said to me after pastor, I agree, I have no problem with that. Right. So we, I think, my wife and I for a moment attended Grace Community Church in the Valley with Dr. John MacArthur that John was telling me, Fred, some of the best urchins I have are doctors. Yes. I got that usher over there, Fred, he's an attorney. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And I remember not being able to compute that because the churches I grew up in, important people in the world kind of wanted to be important people in the church. Right. But true spirituality gives you a heart of service. And you don't look at your talent in the world your, the way you do your service in God's house. I don't know why. I just needed to get that out there. Is that all right, Minister? <laughs> That's okay. Thank you very much no. for the privilege. Yes. All right. Now, where were we? <laughs> Discover Let's your gift and use it. Is that where we were? Yes. All right. If you don't exercise your gift, whoever you are, in the body of Christ, the church does not function as well as it should. Please get that. Yes. Please get that from my heart. Yes. All right. Now, Minister, we come to one gift tonight. Are you ready okay. to discuss the gift of apostleship? Sure. I need help with this. You got to help your pastor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I need your help, Sister, sister Minister. Sister Minister, uh, a girlfriend wife. <laughs> I need your help, Sister First Lady, Minister, girlfriend wife. Is that all right? That's we have this fun at home, y'all, and this is going to be a relaxed study. And I told her tonight, don't forget and call me. I told her, I'm going to tell, her, I'm going to tell you guys she's the first lady and my wife. So if she forget and say honey, y'all would know who, why she's saying honey. So <laughs> she is my honey. All right. <laughs> 
The gift of apostleship is what we're going to talk about for the next uh, uh, moments that we have here. The first gift we will discuss is the gift of apostleship. Uh, Minister Gwen, again, read the two snippets of scripture that mention the gift of apostles. Sure. 1 Corinthians 12, 28a says, and God has appointed in the church first apostles. Okay, so first apostles. Mm -hmm. That's the first gift that he appointed and gave to the church. That's why we're going to teach it first. All right, minister, continue reading, please. Ephesians 4, 11, and he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers. Notice again, apostles is listed first. Mm -hmm. So now, 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 let's talk, let's, let's define this. The definition of an apostle mm -hmm. is one who is sent out. Mm -hmm. One who is sent on a mission. Right, right. That's the definition of an apostle. Now, in the New Testament, there are two primary uses of the word apostle, one specific, one general. Mm -hmm. One specifically refers to the 12 that were appointed and sent out by Jesus Christ as recorded in Luke 12, 16, I'm sorry, in Luke 16. Luke, Luke 16, 12 through 16. Minister, would you please read those verses? Yes, I'm reading Luke 6. Verses 12 through 16. Pardon my error, Luke 6. It was at this time that he went out off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also named as apostles. Hmm. This is speaking of Jesus. Yes. Simon, whom he also named Peter and Andrew his brother, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called a zealot, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. All right, so these 12 apostles were chosen from a group of disciples. Yes. Disciple is a follower. People. An apostle is a sent one. Yes. He chose 12 of his followers yes. to be sent out differently from the other group of disciples. Yes. All right. Uh, they were given special powers by Christ and sent out to do ministries. Minister, would you read the verses that discuss uh, this, their powers and duties? Okay, Matthew 10, 1 says, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Okay. Luke 9, 2, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform healing. Hmm. Luke 9, 6, departing, they began going throughout the villages, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. So he gave them special powers, sent them out on a mission to do kingdom work for him. Yes, and incidentally, they were in training. In training. So, yes. so, so they hadn't graduated from the school of Jesus yet. Oh, no, they were just getting going. So they had a, they had, they had a while ago, maybe three more years. And in right. the end, we were going to find out they still needed some training. <laughs> yes. So it's okay for disciples to be in process. That's exactly right. And Jesus was patient with them. Yes. But Jesus also was firm with them when it was necessary. And sometimes in discipling people and leading people, that's necessary as spiritual leaders. Help people discover their gifts and grow. Right. And as you said, the gift is given by the Holy Spirit. Yes. So it's not always that easy to transition from natural thinking. 
yes. to things of the spirit. Wow. And seeing how those things operate. So they were surprised by a lot of things that they encountered when you read the scripture. But that's very informative for us and encouraging to me because when things don't turn out like I maybe had expected, I can refer to the scriptures and say, oh, you know, that happened in Jesus' day. Yes. His disciples also encountered this. It's okay if I didn't get it quite right. Yes. You know, I'm in training. Fantastic. <laughs> well said, Minister. Emmanuel Community Church is located at 12607 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You can find all of our messages on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click subscribe and thanks for watching. Be blessed for God is with us.